Hi, this is Michel Birler. Welcome to our series on optimization. This video is designed to provide some intuitions on linear optimization, both from the geometric and the algebraic point of views. We would like to solve the following optimization problem. Minimize C transpose X such that AX less or equal to B and X is non-negative. X is a vector of P components. A is a matrix with M rows and P columns. B is a vector of M elements and C is a vector of P elements. In order to understand the geometry of this problem, let's first consider one of the inequality constraints. Let's take the number i. So if we denote by a i the, num the row number i of the matrix A, these constraints can be written a i transpose x less or equal to b i, where b i is the i component of vector b. Now we draw the hyperplane of equation a i transpose x equal b i. Note that a i, the vector a i, is actually the normal vector of this hyperplane. From a geometrical point of view, all axes which are above this hyperplane, meaning in the direction of the normal vector, we verify the inequality a i transpose x greater or equal to b i. All axes which are below the hyperplane, meaning the, in the opposite direction of a i, we verify the inequality a i transpose x less or equal to b i, which is exactly our constraint. Let's see how it works in two dimensions. So p equals 2. So we draw the two axes, x1 and x2. Let's draw in blue three hyperplane. In this case, there are three lines because p equals 2. Okay, so they correspond to three constraints. The intersection of the three all spaces and the non-negative orthan is represented by this green area. This is called the polyhedron. This corresponds to the set of feasible solutions. That is, all the solutions that verify the constraint of our optimization problem. Now let's look at the objective function, C transpose x. And let's draw, for the sake of the example, all values of x1 and x2 such that C transpose x is equal to some given value, let's say 2. This is a line, and this line is represented in dashed uh, red on this, on this picture. So these are all the points such that the objective value is equal to 2. Now, not all these points are feasible, okay? So only the in points which are the intersection of the polyhedron and this line are feasible solutions of the optimization problem. So they are the feasible solution with value 2. Now we would like to make this value as small as possible. So we can actually now try to draw in the same way all points with value C transpose X equals 1, which is lower than the previous one. As you see this line, which are all the points such that C transpose X is equal to 1, is parallel to the other one. Okay, so we call it a level line. It's the line which is corresponding to the level 1 of the objective function, and it's parallel to the one which is at level 2. And of course, it is strictly better in the sense that the value of the objective function is strictly lower than previously. So all the points which are at the intersection of uh, this line and the polyhedron are feasible points with a better objective function, a better value of the objective function than before. So now the idea is to go as far as we can. We would like to make it as small as possible. So we will continue to move this line parallel to itself all the way until there is no possibility to intersect the polyhedron anymore. So we have moved the line parallel to itself as far as we could without leaving an empty intersection with the, with the constraint polyhedron. And this line, which is the most extreme that we could get, has only one point which, is the which has an intersection with the constraint polygon. And this point is actually the optimal solution. There is no possibility to find a point x such that the value of the objective function would be better. Because indeed, if such a point would exist, it would be on a line which would be further away from this one 
and, uh, and parallel to itself. Like this one, for example. But that line has no intersection with the constraint polyhedron, so there is no feasible point which corresponds to this altitude of the objective function. So this shows that x star is indeed the best possible solution, is the optimal solution of our optimization problem. X star, from a, geometric, from a geometrical point of view, is a vertex of the constraint polyhedron. A way to see this is that there are two constraints that are active at the solution. If we mean by active a, an inequality constraint which is verified at equality. As you can see, two of these constraints are active, and the three other constraints, the three other uh, facets of the polyhedron, are inactive. The number of active constraints at the solution happens to be equal to two, which is the number of variables. And this is a property that we will verify in most of the cases. So this illustrates an important property of linear optimization. If the linear optimization problem has an optimal solution, there exists an optimal vertex of the constraints polyhedron. It's important, it means that when we are looking for an optimal solution of the problem, it is sufficient to look at the vertices of the constraint polyhedron in order to find it. Now we will move to the algebraic intuition. In order to do so, we will modify the formulation of the problem. Let's take again the inequality AI transpose X less or equal to BI. It's actually equivalent to another formulation when we include a new variable in the formulation. This variable is called the slack variable because it measures the, the, the distance between AI transpose X and B. So we write the, the inequality constraint now as an equality constraint plus a non-negativity of this slack variable. The equality constraint is ai transpose x plus yi is equal to bi, and yi is a new variable which must be non-negative. By doing so, it means that we can write our linear optimization problem in a new way. Minimize c transpose x such that ax equals b and x greater or equal to zero. So now the variables x are the variables of the original problem plus the slack variables that we had to introduce in order to write everything as an equality constraint. Now the vector x is of size n, which is equal to m plus p. p are the original variables and m are the number of constraints. So this is also the number of slack variables that we had to include in the new formulation. Similarly, the matrix A is of size m times n, so the number of rows is still m as before, and now the number of columns is n, the original p columns plus the m additional columns corresponding to the slack variables. B is again of dimension m, and C is like x of dimension n. This is roughly the shape of our system of, of equation AX equals B. The N columns of A, the M rows of A, and the similar size of X and B. Now let's do the following. We will identify M columns of A, and we choose these columns in a way that they are linearly independent. For the sake of the illustration, we will assume that the m columns that we have chosen are the first columns. Later on, if we want to, do, to choose other columns, we can reorder them, change the numbering, in order to put them in the front and do the exact same derivation. The matrix composed of these m columns is, of course, a square matrix. It has m rows and m columns. We call this matrix B. Because our columns are linearly independent, B is invertible, which is very important. The remaining columns of A form the matrix N. We split the vector v, uh, X in the same way. So we have, on the one hand, the, component, the M components corresponding to the matrix B, that we denote by XB, and the rest is denoted by XN, which is of dimension N minus 
M. The B stands for basic, so we will call these variables that we have chosen the, the M variables that correspond to the columns that has been that have that have been selected. We call these variables the basic variables. Now this specification allows us to write an in an equivalent way the equality constraints. We can write it now B X B plus N X N equals B. Now we use the fact that the matrix B is invertible to manipulate this equation and write the basic variables xb as a function of the non-basic variables xn. So we obtain the formulation xb equals b minus 1b minus b minus 1n xn. So now we have another formulation of the constraint which is completely equivalent. We can do the same decomposition for the objective function. We can write c transpose x equal cb transpose xb where cb are the components of vector c that correspond to the basic variables plus cn transpose xn again where cn are the components of the c vector corresponding to the non-basic variables so now we can write the objective function as d transpose xn plus cb transpose b minus 1 b where d is defined as the vector pre-multiplying xn, that is cn transpose minus cb transpose b minus 1n. So what is interesting in this formulation is that the c transpose x depends only on the non-basic variables. xb has been eliminated. There is no basic variable in the formulation of the objective function. It means that we can now write our optimization problem in an equivalent way. We minimize d transpose xn plus cb transpose b minus 1b, such that xb equals b minus 1b minus b minus 1n xn. So this constraint is equivalent to ax equals b. And of course, the variables must be non-negative. Now, if we look at the objective function, the second term does not involve any x. So it's a constant. So therefore, it does not play any role in the optimization. Therefore, we can remove it. We can actually erase it. It does not play any role. So what is left is a, an objective function with only xn involved, meaning that if we find a solution for xn, the constraint will be automatically verified, the equality constraint, because xb will be calculated directly from xn. So the only problem would be to verify that xb would be non-negative. But let's leave this on the side for a second, and let's focus on the problem consisting of solving the problem only with xn. So this is the optimization problem called minimize d transpose xn such that xn is non-negative. So let's take one variable at a time. So let's consider variable k. So in this case, we would like to minimize the term corresponding to this variable as much as we can. So this term is dk xk, and we know that xk must be greater or equal to zero. Two things can happen. If dk is non-negative, then each time we increase xk, then we increase the objective function. So therefore, if we want to decrease the objective function, we have to decrease xk. And we can do this as much as we can, meaning until we reach zero. So the optimal solution for xk, if dk is non-negative, is must be zero. Now, if dk is negative, in this case, each time we increase xk, we actually decrease the objective function which is what we want to do. We want to minimize. And, but xk has no upper bound. We can increase xk all, all the time. We have no limit, meaning that this solution is not bounded. There is no solution. It can be due to two things. Either the original problem was unbounded, or maybe by increasing xk a lot, so what will happen is that the xb that we have forgotten will become negative. But whatever the reason, we will not obtain an optimal solution using this. So if dk is negative, there will be no optimal solution. So the conclusion of this is that this new problem in xn, if it has a solution, the solution must be xn equals zero. So the solution of our optimization problem is obtained by setting all the non-basic variables to zero and all the basic variables to the vector b minus one b. And if this vector is positive, we obtain, actually, um, uh, a feasible solution of the original problem. 
Note that at this solution, they are exactly P constraints which are active. As we have seen before, such a point is a vertex of the polyhedron. It has P active constraints. Therefore, we have constructed algebraically the vertex of the polyhedron, which is, as we saw before, also a, con a candidate to be the optimal solution. This algebraic construction is called a feasible basic solution. Basic because it has been constructed using this matrix B, which are the columns of A which have been selected, and feasible because it verifies all the constraints. The constraints AX equals B by construction, the way we have defined XB as a function of XN, and all the variables are non-negative. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want more information, I refer you to the book Optimization Principles and Algorithm at EPFL Press and the online material which is available on optimizationprinciplesalgorithm.com.